Oh yeah, it's double. Double again. Get started. Yeah. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Michael Kuipers. On behalf of the Western Ontario Vegan Society, thank you very much for coming this evening. Before we begin, I would like to thank our executive team and Animal Liberation Alliance London for helping to make this event a success. Harold Brown is the founder of FarmKind and an advocate for social and environmental justice. His amazing story is one of transformation from animal farmer to vegan animal advocate. He was born and raised on a cattle farm in south central Michigan and spent over half his life in agriculture, including three years in the dairy industry. Harold is featured in the award-winning film Peaceful Kingdom, The Journey Home. He also works as an advocate for animal rights, sustainable independent family farms, and peace through nonviolence. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce Harold Brown. Please give him a warm welcome. There we go. Well, thank you for the applause, but you know what they say, you shouldn't clap for somebody until you've heard what they've got to say. Um, so, just to give you a thumbnail of my life, grew up in Michigan, grew up on a as what anybody might any measure would call a family farm, a uh, small independent family farm. Raised Angus Gale. Um, years later, I ended up working in a dairy plant, you know, where we bottled milk, made ice cream and cheese, and so on. So my dairy industry is that. But I also worked occasionally on a dairy. My, the farm I grew up on, I was a fifth generation, and I mom's folks had the farm. And then the farms around us were owned by my great uncles and my grandfather's brothers. Um, my um, uh, one uncle lived across the road. He raised sheep and had anywhere from 500 to 1,000 head at any time. And then my other uncle, George, he had a dairy farm. So I had experience with dairy production from that end of that too. So, um, over time, I um, never questioned any of this. I mean, I grew up, as most farm kids do, you know, I grew up with 4-H, and then there's FFA after that, Future Farmers of America, and so on. And, you know, everything, everything reinforced this worldview I had of animals, okay? And probably more so than anything else other than like my family, the indoctrination of my family, my community, my church. Um, but more than that, I would say it was television. Because you turn on TV, even today, you turn on TV, and every commercial break has at least one commercial that's selling you animal products. And if they're really good at it, they can cram all the animal products into one sandwich. You know? <laughs> well, you think about these... Um, uh, breakfast things that you can get. So you've got, you know, you've got egg in there, you've got sausage, and which has got all kinds of stuff in it, maybe more than one kind of, you know, species of animal, and, uh, you know, cheese, you got dairy product in there. And we, I don't think we break it down like that when we see these advertisements, but that's how it is, and it's, part of this whole thing where we think we have choices, which we can talk about later if you want to, uh, where we think what we eat is our choice, not so much. In the United States, we have something in livestock industry called the checkoff programs. So for every cow, every sheep, every hog, it gets sold. You pay one dollar for each head that goes to uh, the beef checkoff program, the pork checkoff program. What that is, it's a fund to pay for advertising to promote your commodity. So that goes in, that's millions and millions and millions of dollars. Um, and so they get focus groups together, they get some of the best minds in advertising and public relations, and they craft these commercials that 
you know, are basically convincing you that our product's better than the other guy's product. And in the PR industry, I know somebody who worked for years in the PR industry. She actually started off in England as a PR person trying to put a positive spin on the young people dying from mad cow disease. And she was working for the dairy industry to say, oh no, you know, you can't make, there's, that's only a correlation, there's no causality, you know, well there was. But then she had a conflict of conscience and she left that, came to the United States, and uh, she ended up becoming a vegan. Um, and they, somebody working from the other side of it, but what I learned from her, and then the subsequent reading I did, is we have something <coughs> called manufactured consent. So we end up developing brand loyalties that we think are our choices. And some of this comes from our families too. It's like when I go to talk to college kids, and I see not all of you are college kids. Uh, so I always start to talk by saying, how many of you, uh, if you're going to buy your first car, you're going to buy a Ford, hands go. You're going to buy a Chevy, hands go. You're going to buy a Toyota, hands go. Uh, you're going to buy a Ferrari. Yeah, everybody's hands go. But the thing, and I say, well, how many of you are Mac users? Hands go. How many are PC only? Hands go. How many of you, if you're going to buy clothes, prefer to buy your clothes at, say, Old Navy? How many of you prefer to go to Abercrombie and Fitch if you can afford it? How many of you, if you go to the second hand store and get your stuff? Hands go. On. But in the PR industry, they see us as cattle. That's actually how they talk in-house about us. And it's called branding. Now, that's both metaphorically and literally. They see us as cattle to put their brand on. And once they've got that, then they have almost, hopefully, a lifetime allegiance to their product. This is manufactured consent. Now, when I left the farm, I moved to Cleveland, Ohio, and I worked as a mechanic, and I used to watch these guys argue at lunchtime about where they're going to go eat. Well, not today we all feel like getting burgers. And then you watch them throw down about, oh, I want to go to Wendy's, I want to go to McDonald's, I want to go to Burger King. It's like there's this huge, in their minds, there's a huge difference between each of those. And then, a week goes by and they go, I'm tired of burgers. Let's get subs. Oh, Subway or Quiznos. And then they get in arguments about that. I say, dude, you know, Quiznos grills the bun. It's the only difference. <laughs> but it's a huge difference to them. It's brand loyalty. You know? So part of what this all amounts to is, is that we have to kind of take the blinders off and realize that what we think are our choices are things that are handed to us by family, by our culture, and by advertising. It's manufactured for us. And the other thing that kind of makes this such a deep-seated thing with us about why we need to eat animal products is that we are all part of a herding culture. Now, I don't know how many of you have actively farmed animals. How many have? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so the rest of you have. Now, I can't speak about Canada, but I can tell you about the United States, because every 10 years we do, the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture does what they call an agricultural census. And then they crunch that data and it comes out every 10 years, or the 11th year. It comes up. Well, to put this into perspective, in the United States, in 1950, the percentage of people who produced food in the United States, not just animal products, but food in general, commodities, food commodities, was 48%. So 48% of the population produced food of some kind for the market. Now, as of the last agricultural census, which those numbers came out in 2009, 
Anybody take a guess at the percentage of the population? That's 320 million people. And how, what percentage of those people are producing food? Anybody? 2%. 2? 3%? 4%. 3%. 4%. 3%. 4%. 3%. 4%. 3%. 4%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%
You can raise them in kindness. You can say you love them. And then say, well, they had a great life, but they're going to have one bad day. Why, why doesn't it apply? Where is the mercy? There is no mercy. No farm animals ever shown mercy. They're all brought into this world to die. And die at a very young age. So it's, you know, considering the lifespans of farm animals, how long they can live. They're very short lives. So humane is not a... Um, now that we got the working definition of it, uh, of that word, I'm not going to stand up here and talk at you. I hate doing that. I just wanted to give you a little of my background, a little bit about what we're, why we see the world the way we see it, to understand, and we can get into this more if you want, about our indoctrination into it, and how do we wake up from this? It's like the movie The Matrix. We have, you know, there comes a point in a lot of different areas, not just this one, where you've got the red and the blue pill. Either you're going to wake up or you're not. It's your choice. Nobody's going to make you do it. I'm not here to browbeat you or anything, and I'm not here expecting you to believe a damn thing I tell you. But I do expect you, if you take issue with something, do your own homework. The science is out there, it's peer reviewed. And you find out that I'm not lying to you. I'm not here to lie to you. If I have an agenda, my agenda is compassion. It's the qualities that I had shut myself down to most of my adult life. And I would say it's more prevalent in the United States than Canada. But we reward, whether it's industry, whether it's corporations, whether it's you know, just the workplace. Whether it's reality TV, we reward sociopathic behavior. It's what we look for. It's about building alliances, wanting to break them down, to screw the other guy because I want to be the winner. That's what reality TV is. It teaches no redeeming social values. But it's what our world's become. Have you paid attention to our presidential race? We have a reality TV guy running for president. It's crazy. But, you know, and that's why I say it's, it's worse in the United States only because we do. In psychological research in the United States, and you can read up on this too, is one in 24 people in the United States is a sociopath. What is a sociopath? It's a person without conscience. And they see compassion, empathy, love as weaknesses. They can't experience those emotions themselves. And they see it as weaknesses to be exploited in others. I've worked with some. It's a horrible thing to watch. Because they damage other people and they never get caught. So that's, you know, we've got to understand that being compassionate people, being empathetic people. Humans are hardwired. They are, unless you're a sociopath. Then you see it as a weakness. But if those are our better selves, how come we don't foster that? Why don't we nurture that? In all areas, not just being beaten, which is probably one of the, which I would say if you want a definition of that, is just trying to the best of your ability, as imperfect as it always will be, to live morally and ethically consistent in the world, based upon compassion, empathy, and unconditional love. Now, being a guy in North America, pretty much anywhere in the world, some cultures are worse than ours. Those are not qualities that we're taught to exhibit. You know, you got to be a man. You know, and to do otherwise is weak. <coughs> well, actually, I think it takes a stronger character to be compassionate, to be empathetic, to try to practice unconditional love, than it does.
to make sure, because it takes a lot of courage, but to make sure that you're a much better person for it and people around you like you better instead of being a tough guy. Oh yeah, it's double organic. Did you know I offer raw food coaching? Comment, like, share, and subscribe. Got epic recipes, fitness, and raw food motivation. Connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Whoa, look at all those recipes. Those look tasty. Give me some of that. I'm proud to announce the release of my free raw recipe app. Do you want over 100 original raw food recipes in the palm of your hand? Click the links to download or search Double Organic on your phone.